I'm joined now by Jane McLaren, Executive Director at Beyond 21. Welcome to the show, Jane. Hey, welcome to you. Good morning. All right. So uh, obviously we know that uh, COVID-19 has had far-reaching effects on everybody in the community. Uh, let's talk a little bit about how Beyond 21 has fared uh, over the last couple months. Well, as you know, we work with adults with developmental disabilities and those social skills and social connections are huge for them. And that's been taken away. We closed our doors the 13th of March, like so many organizations. Uh, we're still waiting. We don't know when we'll be coming back. Uh, so we've switched to a Zoom platform. Like many people, we're working in a virtual world and every week we're building more and more participants joining us. Uh, we've been supporting our families, helping them to get the technology in place that they need to do this. We've been sharing uh, phone calls. We've been doing face-to-face -face visits with them from a distance, of course. Just anything to help them stay connected and not just with us in the program, but with, with each other because they have friends in this program. And we have participants all across SDNG and all across the city of Cornwall. And they're not able to get out and just go for a walk with their friend, even at a distance right now. So we're really working to build that distance and also sharing a lot of information with them to help them understand this whole COVID-19 world we live in, uh, understand the social restrictions and what they can and can't do. Definitely a different world. <laughs> Absolutely. And uh, of course, Beyond 21 was uh, in the midst of a campaign for a new building during all of this. So, uh, but that campaign seems to have, uh, have uh, been a success anyway. Uh, we're still working on it. Our capital campaign has been extended. Of course, again, as the same as all the other charities, not for profits in the area, our fundraisers. So we had a fundraiser set in April and in May. We had two of them, large ones in August, and the doors were closed on all of them and they have not been reopened. We had fundraisers coming in directly for the capital campaign as well. Our work stopped because of course all work stopped on buildings like that. So they are back. We are in the midst of finishing, but the capital campaign has been extended. We're still looking for funds. If anybody wants to support us in our build for 1924 Pit, uh, definitely check out our website and we welcome any and all support. And of course, uh, recently it was announced uh, the United Way uh, was providing some funding for, for some of the Zoom uh, activities that you alluded to uh, in the first uh, answer. Yes, so through the emergency fund that was provided by the government, United Way has allotted us some funds and that's allowing us to really focus on some of these COVID-19 skills, uh, helping our participants to understand how to use them, understand the whole two meters, social distancing doesn't mean social isolation, uh, helping them to understand what's open, what's not open, the different phases. It's an ongoing work with them, but we really appreciate the funding to be able to do that because our sources of funding have just disappeared. So we've had to get creative with some upcoming summer fundraisers. Absolutely. So let's talk about uh, some of those upcoming ones. Uh, what's, uh, what's on the docket? So we have three that are upcoming. So Great Raisin River Foot Race would normally take place in Williamstown. It would have been the 42nd annual one. And of course, gathering a few hundred people to go for a run right now is not happening. So we moved to virtual, so you can still participate. For the virtual race, you register on raceroster.com. And then sometime between Friday, August 7th and Sunday, August 9th, you do a virtual 5K or a virtual 11K. And we have a sponsor, Roso has stepped up to be a sponsor. So we're creating custom race buffs uh, which are, you, if you're familiar with the bus, they're like the tubular headbands. So every single person who participates will get a race buff for doing that. So it's this like be a part of history. I don't know that you'll ever see this race virtual again. So it's an opportunity to be a part of history to do this. So that's one. On Canada Day, we will be starting an online raffle called Catch the Ace. I don't know if you're familiar with it or not. It's a progressive raffle. So Every week there is a winner. So the whole thing is online. It's beyond21ace.com.org, excuse me, will be the website and all this will be available through our website. Every week what happens, it's like a 50-50. So if there was $1,000, 500 goes to beyond 21, 500 becomes the jackpot. Out of that jackpot, 20% goes to the winner of that week. The other 30% goes into a progressive jackpot. So if you buy a ticket, Gabe, and you win, so you would win, 20% of what all the ticket sales were for the week, 
and then you have a chance to find the ace of spades. So if the number you pick is the ace of spades, you win the jackpot. If not, the money stays in and it grows and it grows and it grows and it grows. And in some places, this is 10,000, 100,000. Sometimes it grows over a million dollars, depending on when it's found and how many tickets are sold. So we're really excited to, to roll this one out and it starts on Canada Day, which is great, easy to remember. The last one we have, Cornwall Food Fest, near and dear to our heart, of course, will not be happening this year. We can't put thousands of people downtown. It won't work. So we are working with local restaurants and local foodies, and they are donating us a recipe. And we are creating the ultimate Cornwall recipe book. So right now we have Ty Kummer, Simply Jennifer, uh, Restaurant 800, Spinners, uh, uh, the Birchwood Cafe, all kinds of restaurants that are committed to giving us a recipe. And we're just starting this. So this is going to go online by donation and you'll be able to download it for a donation. And this will launch the week of Food Fest. You'll see more information. We're just building it. But this is our way of including the local businesses, the downtown businesses and keeping that whole food vibe alive for Food Fest. And that's certainly important uh, because we know how beloved uh, Food Fest uh, is as an event downtown. Uh, and just finally, I know we alluded to it at the beginning, but uh, we, we can't emphasize enough how important this money is for Beyond 21 to continue its services right now. Uh, just talk a little bit about the effect COVID-19 does have on, on people with developmental and disabilities who are already uh, at risk or susceptible to isolation. So for this population those social skills are very challenging and it's something we work on a lot of beyond 21 and i remember with my staff one day we had a conversation and we said can you facilitate relationship and kind of went, well no and then we went well yes so a lot of what we do there is we structure to encourage our participants to engage with each other and to take those social relationships outside all of a sudden they're missing this face-to-face -face, and we're now past like three months without that face-to-face -face and without that support we have participants who have no computers, no cell phones. So their social realm right now has been us doing physical phone calls or us showing up at the door and talking to them over the porch. Um, even encouraging, so on the Zoom chats, our participants come in and the families say, they, they sit and they count down the hours to when they're gonna be able to get together and physically see each other again because they don't get to see each other because they live in so many vast different areas. Without that, it becomes very easy for this population to sit at home, watch TV, play video games, be very content by themselves. And then when all of this ends, we're back to building again because they aren't used to being around people. They aren't used to the noise. They aren't used to the vibrancy of community with them. We don't want them to lose those skills. So it's really important through this time to help them connect with each other. And I think we all experience that too, but they're needing that partnership to walk them through this and give them ideas on how they can cope and maintain their social skills during this time. Absolutely. That's what it's all about for sure. And, uh, it's uh, even though some of the traditional fundraisers have unfortunately uh, not been able to happen, it's great that Beyond 21 has found uh, three new ways to, to raise money for these very uh, integral programs. On that note, Jane, uh, thank you so much for joining me. And of course, if people want more information, they can visit Beyond 21's website. Absolutely. Thank you, Gabe.